you know when you go to a church service and then the preacher is preaching and then you feel like uh -uh, everyone is not there this is just for me and we poured petrol immediately when we started lighting when she said there was lightning we put these things down there was nothing and the sky was clear and all of a sudden there was a lightning from nowhere hello welcome to my channel my name is lindy sherry's and in today's video i'm going to talk about what happened when i burned my sango my altars ornament whatever you want to call it without wasting time let's go straight to the video then okay now i am planted at a church what's the next step i am not going to burn these things without god saying i should burn and i am scared because my aunt got sick when she burned those things and then one day when i came back from work I saw cars outside. I saw my aunts, family members, and then they were saying, uh, we hear that you're now going to church. Um, we just want to give you the rules. These things belong to the family. You cannot ban them. I know maybe some young pastor is deceiving you, thinking that maybe I found a boyfriend at church and that's the reason why I want to leave. And don't be deceived. These people, they also go back home and do these rituals and also appease their ancestors. Do not ban these things. These things belong to the family. Then I said to them, if any one of you here wants to be a Sangoma, they can take these things. But me, I do not want it anymore at that now where my family is not happy and i do not want to be a sangoma anymore and they think these things shouldn't be banned because they belong to a family and and i am saying if any of you wants to be a sangoma take these things but mina i do not want to be a sangoma i didn't want to be a sangoma and i am not going to continue being a sangoma but i was still in that journey where I wasn't ready to ban those things and i was told that i need to wait for god to tell me before i can ban those things I wasn't ready to ban those things and I still had two issues. One was every time I came back from work, I had to go back to that room and ban in paper. The second one was every time a person who came for consultation, if I send them back home, I was getting sick. So I started asking God like, okay, God, now I know I've asked for these signs. Please help me with this one. I'm not going to go to that room and I'm not going to accept anyone for consultation. And let me see if I won't get sick. And then I did that. Nothing happened to me. I was fine. I mean, guys, all these years I was getting sick. And that day when I asked the following day, I sent someone back. Nothing happened to me. And I didn't even ban that in bed. Nothing happened to me. So I just locked that room waiting for instruction for me to ban these things. And then I also asked another question someday. And then I said, God, I don't understand this whole thing. Um, getting to relationships, they're not working. So tell me if I am Paul and I'm not going to get married, tell me so that I don't even waste my time dating. And I will just know that I am Paul. And anyway, a family member told me that no one will marry me. I don't deserve to be married. She even said my money will actually marry me. Then I, I, I always believe that no one will love me or marry me. So I just asked God, I'm like, God, if I'm not going to get married, give me a sign again. And then the following day, my husband came. We're not getting along around that time. But then we started talking for hours and hours and hours. And then afterwards when he left, my sister-in-law said, uh, what did you pray for today? Because every night she would ask me, what did you pray for? What did you pray for? And then that time she asked me, what did you pray for? Then I said, I prayed for God. If I'm not going to get married, then he should answer so that I don't waste my time. And then he said, who came today? Then I said, my ex-boyfriend came to visit. And what happened? Then I spent hours talking to him. And then around that time, I knew that God was saying, that's my husband. And even today, guys, that's my husband. So you can ask God for even these things. And one day, the same ex-boyfriend who just came back to my life, we went dating, we were just talking, he invited me to a crusade somewhere in Tembisa. And then I said, ah, let me just go. And then when I went there, you know when you go to a church service and then the preacher is preaching and then you feel like uh -uh, everyone is not there. This is just for me. And then that lady started preaching and said, why are you scared? I mean, this God is big. This God created everything in here. His world is actually his footstool. And I started imagining. And then he said, all these planets are created by him. And no one understands the end of this planet. She does this. And she started going on and on. And that time I was like, yo, 
yo, yo, it's time, it's time. And then I said to my husband, we need to go. We need to go. And after service, I we didn't leave immediately. But after service, I'm like, we need to go. It's time. It's time. I kept on saying it's time. He didn't understand what I was talking about. But I kept on saying it's time. It's time. On, on our way back, I remember SMSing the pastor's wife saying it's time. It's time. Because they said I should let them know when it's time. And she started praying, guys. She started praying, guys. And I started reading the word. She kept sending scriptures. 9, 10, 11. 12 we were praying and she kept on sending scriptures around 4 a.m i'm like okay now it must happen now it must happen and then i woke up thinking okay my brother is sleeping here and he's probably going to stop me if i say i'm going to bend this thing then i woke up and slowly went to that room reversed my car and started putting everything in there started putting everything in there and then this girl um, who was staying at home she started helping me because i woke her up and like she started helping me and we did it so fast even the kitchen that room was empty like there was nothing i didn't want to take any chance and leave anything we started removing everything i drove to my ex because it was morning and i didn't know where we we're going to burn it and i wanted a petrol and then he said okay I, I called him and said you need to wake up i'm coming to pick you up and remember it was 4 a.m and then he woke up and like hey don't ask me questions i'm going to burn these things and, and then i went to pick him up and then we went to the petrol station somewhere in olifant fountain we bought the petrol and then we went to olifant you know where's clayville where this house is now in Clayville, that bush. We actually went there and found a spot and removed everything. Around the time, I think it was 6 o'clock, and we poured a bed roll. Immediately when we started lighting women cheese, there was lightning. We put these things down, there was nothing, and the sky was clear. And all of a sudden, there was a lightning from nowhere. And then he said, and now, do you remember he's from a family? that actually grew up not knowing anything about ancestors so he didn't even believe but then when that lightning started striking he said hey can't these things exist and then we started lighting the fire and then we ran to the car because there was lightning and then it was raining and then uh, we could see that the fire is not really stopping but then not everything was burned and then it eventually stopped when it stopped we went back and then it's like no we can leave these things now um, i mean it's not that much and then i said if anyone pick up these things while walking these things they will go with him i want everything in ashes when you read the bible the bible says burn all the altars destroy all the altars so i wanted everything to be burned into ashes and then we put it in petrol again and then we light the fire and then everything was bent. And then the sky started to be clear again. I went back home. My brother was just standing there saying, what did you do? You're going to be sick. First day, I wasn't sick. Second day, I wasn't sick. Third day, I was laughing, saying, oh, I'm not becoming sick. I'm not dying. Nothing is happening to me. We actually won that fight. We actually won that fight. Guys, I was free from that day. Ever since that day up until now, no one will tell me that God doesn't exist. The power that I've seen during that time, the power that I've seen during that time was bigger than anything else. God is above everything. He's in control of everything, of your life. Whatever fear you have, just know he didn't give us the spirit of fear. And as long as you are scared, the devil operates there. He wants you to be scared. He wants you to not to see the power that you have. So utilize the power that you have. Even when you're scared, just go and say, according to this word, the word of God says this and this, and I will not be scared, and I will continue walking with boldness and with authority that comes from the word of God. So guys, uh, that's what happened, and that's how that ended. So the next video I'm going to focus on Ugulaya, guys. Ugulaya. So wait for that video. And if you didn't watch the previous videos, please go watch those videos. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe, share this video, because I really do want to share this message. That's the only purpose I was created for. Thank you so much for watching.